Hey problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to go through the math initial assessment, um, self-assessment numbers 15 to 23. This is a second video in a two-part video. So I'll put a link to the first part up above. And this is from the IBU International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Study Guide and Practice Test put out by Complete Test Preparation here. So I'm going to go through the math self-assessment that's in this book. I've done 1 through 14 in a previous video and in this video I'm going to go 15 to 23. Okay, let's start on number 15. Uh, the notation isn't that clear here but it's saying the square root of 144. That square root is saying what times itself will equal 144. So you're looking at factors that are the same and I can see that 12 times 12 is 144. So 15 is 12 or D and that's the only easy one on this whole second part of the test. From here they just get pretty hard. The first 14 or actually the first 15 problems are like an Algebra 1 class and now the next um, 15 or so are all Algebra 2 and they get pretty hard. 16 here you have root 75 plus radical 48 minus radical the quantity 3 divided by 0.01 let me go up here 3 divided by 0.01 I have to move this over 1, 2 places so I have to go 1, 2 so how many times does 1 go into 300? it goes in 300 times so this is the equivalent of root 300 these are all dissimilar things so they cannot be combined. However, I could pull out factors in these and for every pair, one will come out. So I'm looking at the factors of 75. 75 is made up of a 25 and a three. 25 is a five and a five. So you make up a 75 with a five times five times three. Here is a pair of fives. For every pair, one comes out, right? Here's a pair of 12s, one came out. So this root 75 is 5 root 3. The 48 is made up of a 16 and a 3. 16 is a 4 and a 4. So there's a pair of 4s. One comes out. So it's plus 4. There's no pair for that. It stays in. So the root 75 goes to 5 root 3. The root 48, 4 root 3. And then 300 is a 3 and a 100. 100 is a 10 and a 10. There's a pair of 10s. I have a minus sign in the front. Minus 10 root 3. So this is saying I have 5 of these things plus 4 of these things. 9 of these things minus 10 of them would give me negative 1 of these things. These are similar objects so they can be combined. Right? I'm saying I have 5 root 3s plus 4 root 3s. That's saying I got nine of these things, nine root threes. Nine root three minus 10 root three is negative one root three. And that's answer A right here. All right, moving on to 17. A plus BI. These are actually, I is an imaginary number. I stands for imaginary and it's equal to the square root of negative one. So I is equal to the square root of negative one. I don't know if you have to know that for this. But this is a hard problem. Find one possible value of B in terms of A. Okay, so X equals A plus BI and Y equals A minus BI. X times Y equals 5A squared. So I'm going to take this value for X, plug it in here for X. This value for Y, plug it in here for Y. So I have A plus BI times the quantity A minus BI, and that's equal to 5A squared. So the way I multiply quantities together like this is I take the first term and multiply them A squared, the outer term minus ABI, the inner term plus A times B times I, so minus ABI plus ABI cancel and then my last terms negative b squared i squared and that's equal to 5a squared 
Oops, I squared. So then I got to get B by itself. So I'm going to subtract A squared from both sides. And just like I did with my square roots up here, I combine similar terms. I can do that here, negative B squared, I squared equals 5A squared, minus one of them is four of them, 4A squared. And then lastly on this one right here, I'm going to have I squared is equal to negative one. Right, so if I square this, I square this, I squared that, and that'll cancel. I squared equal to negative one. So I'm going to replace this I squared with a negative one. Negative one times the negative out front here will be negative times negative or positive. So I'll end up with B squared equals four A squared. Lastly, what I'm doing is solving for B in terms of A. So I got to get B by itself. I got to get rid of that square. So I'm going to square root it. Square root and square cancel. If I do that to the left side, I also have to do it to the right side. I do have B by itself. The square root of four is two. The square root of A squared is A. Square root of four is two. Square root of A squared is A. So B is equal to two A. So there's my answer. And there it is right there, answer B. Go down number 18 here. I think I probably need a little more room to work here on 18. Factor the polynomial x to the third, y to the third, minus x squared, y to the eighth. So what that means is I have to pull out the common term in here. So in this first term, there's an x to the third, and the second term here is x to the squared. The largest one I can pull out is x squared. There's a y to the third here, y to the eighth here. Largest one I could pull out is y to the third. After I pull those out, after I pull x squared out of this and a y to the third out of this, I'm left with only an x in this term. x times x squared is x to the third, y to the third, minus, I pulled x squared out, and I pulled y to the third out of here, leaving me with y to the fifth. So that would be, where is that, x squared, x minus y to the fifth, so that's answer A. The check on that is to distribute this thing through the quantity here. These aren't easy. These are pretty typical hard Algebra 2 math problems. Okay, turning the page to the next problem. I'm told that A is equal to radical 3 minus 1 divided by radical 5 plus 1. And B is equal to radical 5 minus 1 over root 3 plus 1. And then it says, what is the value of A in terms of B? So this thing I'm going to want to say A is equal to some form of B. And then that's going to be the answer here. So I don't even really know where to get started. I'm kind of looking at this thing. I know if I multiply by what's called the conjugate, root three plus one, I'll be able to get rid of a middle term and end up with just a number. So I think that's the direction to go. So I'm gonna take this top A value and I'm gonna multiply it by a value of one so it doesn't affect the value. So whatever I put up here has to be here. And I'm also gonna make it the conjugate of this. I'm going to multiply by root 3 plus 1 over root 3 plus 1. So then I FOIL this thing out, meaning I do the first terms, root 3 times root 3, which is root 9, or just 3. The outer terms, 1 times root 3, plus the inner terms, negative 1 times root 3. So those terms cancel out, and that's the reason why I use the conjugate. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So in the numerator, I just have 3 minus 1, or 2. And then the denominator, I have this whole thing here, root 5 plus 1 times root 3 plus 1. Not simple, but at least I have a 2 here. So then on the B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply by a factor of 1 so as not to affect the value. It's going to be the conjugate of this, so it's going to be root 5 plus 1. 
over root 5 plus 1. This and this are equal, so I'm multiplying the whole thing by a 1. And I did the conjugate here to get the middle terms to drop out. So I multiply the first terms together to get 5. The outer terms, root 5. The inner terms, minus root 5. So root 5 minus root 5 cancel minus 1 or 4. And the denominator is the same. Right, it's root 5 plus 1 times root 3 plus 1, which is what I have here. Multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter the order that I multiply them. So I have root 5 plus 1, that there, times root 3 plus 1. So now I can see that A is equal to 2 over this, and B is equal to 4 over this. And actually, I don't even really care what the whole bottom thing is, because it's the same in both. So I could set them equal and cross cancel them, cancel them out. So I could see A is equal to two, B is equal to four. So for these things to be equal, I would have to multiply A by two to be equal to B, right? Let's say these are equal on both of them and I have a two and an A and a four and a B. For A to have the same weight as this, I'd have to multiply it by two or what is the value of A in terms of B, meaning I have to have A by itself, I divide both sides by two. I have A by itself, and A is equal to B over two, or answer A right here. Not easy, that one's, I mean, that one's out from left field. Uh, that's the hardest problem in this whole thing for sure. Okay, on 20 here, use the factoring method to solve this quadratic equation. So a quadratic is something x squared minus something x minus a constant c equal to zero. The way I factor it is I'm looking for two quantities multiplied together to equal zero. And then I'm going to take the factors of x squared, which are only an x and an x, and then the factors of six multiplied together to give me a six, but added together to give me a midterm of five. So a three and a two seems like it'll work but it's not gonna be able to give me a negative five in the middle. So I'm gonna try a six and a one. For the, this to be negative, one of these has to be negative and the other positive. So we'll try the negative here and the positive here and see if that works. The way I check my work here of factoring is by multiplying it out. X times X is X squared minus six X, so X squared minus 6x, inner term, outer term, plus 1x, minus 6. I combine these terms to get x squared minus 5x minus 6. So I factored it correctly. Then the next step is, I'm saying right here, uh, this thing right here times this thing is equal to 0. So that means either x minus 6 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. Solving for x, I add 6 to both sides. x could be 6, and I get a 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, x could be a negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 times anything would be 0. So those are my two possible solutions, and I'm looking for uh, 6 and negative 1. Oh, I don't see it there. Oh, there it is. 6 and 1, right? No, 6 and negative 1 right there. So there, there's the answer to 20. Um, by no means will you be able to learn all of this stuff by me just doing some sample problems, but I'm hoping if you had it before, this will be a good review for it. Okay, find two numbers that sum, sum means add to, sum to 21. So I want two numbers that sum to 21 and the sum of their squares. So if they're squared is 261. So I have two equations two variables. Might be able to eradicate some answers if they don't even add a 21. All of these do add a 21, so I can't block out any answers. Um, I could probably do a bunch of algebra and quadratics like this to solve it, but this might be a better one just to plug in and see if it works. I'm going to start at the top. 15 plus 7 is 21. I'm sorry, 14 and 7 is 21. Then I'm going to square 14. 14 times 14 is 196. 
196 and 49 is, is that two, uh, no, that's gonna be 245 or so. So this one does not work. Then I'll go to the next one, 15 and six out of 21. 15 squared is 225. Six squared is 36. And that's gonna be 261. That one right there does work. So I could see that their squares sum to 261 and the numbers add to 21. So there's my right answer right there. Um, if you want to be safe, you could check the other ones as well and make sure that they don't work. Okay, 22. Using the factoring method like we did abo above, solve the quadratic equation. So the factors x squared again are going to be an x and an x set equal to zero. Factors of four multiplied together to give a four. So it could be a four and a one or a two and a two. And the middle term is a four. So the only two things that are gonna to add together to give me that four from the factors of four will be a two and a two. Either they're both positive or both negative. To get that middle term of four X, they have to both be positive. Again, the check is X squared first, outer plus two X, inner plus two X, so x squared plus 4x, last plus 4. So I can see I did factor correctly. Either this equals 0 or this equals 0. They're the same thing. So either x plus 2 is equal to 0. Subtract 2 from both sides. x is equal to negative 2. And there's my answer, d, right there. Let's turn the page. And here's the last one. And this one looks really ugly and scary but actually isn't too bad. Um, it's just really about combining similar terms. There's no value I have to distribute through any of this quantity. If this were say minus, I would have to distribute that negative through every one of them, but it's not, it's all plus. So I'm gonna start with the y to the fifth. So here's three y to the fifth, two y to the fifth, which is gonna give me five y to the fifth. Then I'll go to the fourth, here's one, y to the fourth, I think that's the only one. So plus y to the fourth. Then I'll go to the next term down to the third. y to the third, there's one here, there's one there. I think that's it, so plus five y to the third. Then we'll go to y squared. I don't see any of those. I could probably finish right now and see that it's gonna be the first one, I think, is the only one that's going to have those terms. But I'll keep going. Y to the square, none of those. Y, here's a negative 2Y and a positive 7Y. So that'll give me 5Y. And then lastly, the numbers, there's a 5 right here and a 2 right here, so plus 7. So combining similar terms, that's what you end up with, which is going to be answer A. It's right here. Uh, I'd really love to hear what you're go what's going on with you in the IVU test. If you're just preparing, if you've taken it before, um, if you need any help or any other problems or kind of tests I could go through on video, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button and think about subscribing um, to a practical math channel. This is a uh, Colfax Math, kind of the practical math channel. I teach high school woodshop and math both. So I was in the trades for years. I still do side work in the trades.